Hello, my name is Anna Ling and I'm a curatorial assistant in the Department of Paintings, Drawings and Prints here at the Fitzwilliam Museum. What we're looking at here is a collection of um, the museum's uh, trade bills, um, some of which are going to be on display in the exhibition Treasured Possessions, um, which opens at the end of March. Um, this is just a small selection from about 90 bills um, in, in the Department of Paintings, Drawings and Prints. Um, and what I like especially about this collection, although it's smaller than some others that exist um, in um, other institutions, is that it comes from a single source, a single family living in London um, from um, the mid-1760s to around um, the mid-1780s, the Blaithwaite. And in uh, around 1766-77, um, um, William Blaithwaite, um, who lived at Durham Park, married a woman called Mary Crichton. And these bills tell us what the couple were buying, um, their, uh, things about their, their residence on Golden Square. And um, the bills also give a lot of interesting information about the shopkeepers um, in London. And that's why I like these in particular, a bit more social history. So, for instance, the, these two bills on, this, on the left hand side. Uh, are to do with the Blaithwaite's residence. Um, the first is um, issued from a, an ironmonger called Edward Berry, and it's quite a long um, bill, and it seems to have been run up in one session, which you can tell from the fact that the, the phrase uh, set of shovel and tongs appears repeatedly throughout the list, and it gives the impression that someone was thinking room by room, possibly from the top of the house down to the bottom. The layout of the house would be the kitchen at the bottom, the sort of Blaithwaite's parlours um, on the, uh, perhaps the second floor, and then the servants would be living the, at the top, and that sort of equates to the descriptions of the sets of shovels and tongs. So this shorter bill um, to the right shows that the Blaithwaite's filled the house not with um, children, but with servants. It um, lists the services for things like cleaning and mending breaches for the coachman. It also mentions um, someone called a helper and a butler, a footman um, as well. What's interesting about the bill is that it lists services for cleaning and mending. So these are old clothes that the servants are wearing. When it came to their own clothes, the Blaithwaite spent rather a lot more money and they were going to the um, most important mercers of the day in London to buy their own clothing. Big Gibson, Ibbotson and um, Hinchliffe, these in, in Cobber Garden and um, Ludgate Hill. So the bills also tell us interesting facts about the shopkeepers living in London at this time. Um, some shopkeepers chose not to illustrate their trade cards at all. And this bill here from Anne Hallmark has no printed illustration, just um, engraved lettering. Um, she was the owner of a night soil carrying company. These were men who would come into um, houses before um, a sanitary system and would empty um, a household's waste into their trucks and carry it away. Um, night soil carriers were frequently reported in um, contemporary newspapers. People would complain that so-and-so had um, tipped the human waste onto um, a road causing blockages and annoyance. And so Anne Hallmark might have decided to have this entirely text-based trade card um, and not devote any of the space to illustration because it was more important to tell patrons that she was respectable and would um, take proper care. The bills at the Fitzwilliam do at least give a good idea of what um, a single family of a certain income was buying and where they were buying from in London. Um, and they also give some interesting facts about shopkeepers trying to do business at this time. 